Hello, and welcome to the very first session here at Woo Sesh. Now, we like to start off strong with the official State of the Woo. This started way back in 2014 in San Francisco at the very first Woo Conf. Now, most of the talks today are going to be between 15 and 30 minutes, but we have a ton of people about to come up on video and give you an update about every aspect of WooCommerce. So this is a jam-packed 90-minute session. Just as a reminder, everything is being recorded, and there will be a few minutes of Q&A at the end. To get us started, I want to welcome the community lead for WooCommerce at Automatic, one of the friendliest guys you'll ever meet. Please welcome Jonathan Wold. Thank you, Patrick. Hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan Wold, and I lead community initiatives here at WooCommerce. At WooCommerce, we're on a mission to democratize commerce, which for us means making commerce more accessible to everyone. We want to inspire merchants with what's possible. We want to help them move and empower them to move from inspiration to action. And then we want to do so in a way that lowers the barrier of entry and makes commerce as accessible as possible. Last year, Paul shared two of our goals, our two goals, and they continue to be our, our focus. The first is to grow the gross merchandise volume of WooCommerce stores. For us, this is all about helping more merchants succeed. The second is to improve the product experience to be more appealing to sellers. This is all about lowering the barrier of entry and making WooCommerce as a whole easier to use. So quite a bit has happened in the past year. It was about a year ago when I joined the company, I was focused on growing our local meetups program and had a bunch of new things that were coming up, a lot of things I was excited about. I, In the process of doing that, I started my own local meetup, which kicked off on March 11 of this year, which turns out to be the same day that the World Health Organization classified COVID-19 as a pandemic. So it was just a couple of days after that that we ended up uh, transitioning the meetup program entirely to virtual. COVID, COVID impact, COVID-19 rather has impacted clearly uh, all of us. And for me, at least one of the bright spots in the midst of all this, this uh, terribleness has been the growth in e-commerce and the opportunity that we've all had to help more merchants get online and, and have success in their business. And WooCommerce is growing quite a bit for 2020 our total payment volume is projected to reach 20.6 billion. That's a 74% growth compared to 2019. Now, note that this is only what's measured by our payment partners. So that means it's only a part of WooCommerce's actual gross merchandise volume because a lot of folks will sell stuff in Woo that's not, not caught by payment partners. Also, according to BuiltWith.com's data, just over 2.2 million websites are running WooCommerce, which is 25% of all online stores. That's a pretty big deal. And it's something that we're, we're excited about. We're excited to be seeing that growth. Now, with all that growth, that means that there's more opportunity than ever to help merchants succeed. And that's where you come in. You folks are helping merchants take their stores to the next level. You're building the plugins and themes that they're using. You're providing the services that their businesses depend on. That's incredibly important work. And that's why we're here at Woo Sesh and happy to be a part of it. We wanna help you and support you in helping more merchants succeed. Now, one of the areas that especially matters to us is listening to your feedback. I joined the team last year to start supporting and growing the broader WooCommerce community. And this year, Alan Smith came on board to start working directly with developers. We grow together. Thank you for all the feedback that you've been sharing and please keep it coming. Now, let's talk for a moment about community. Our work in community at WooCommerce is focused on two areas. The first is supporting the existing WooCommerce community. The second is to help that community grow. Now, all of that work is in service of the mission. We're here to democratize commerce, and we have that shared goal of helping more merchants succeed. And in community, we do that by, again, inspiring merchants with what's possible. We do that through stories, through showcases, through giving them examples. We then help empower them to move from inspiration to action with guides, with tutorials, support, and great software in WooCommerce and the plugins and extensions and themes that you guys are building. We're also continually looking for ways to make WooCommerce easier to use for as many people as possible. And a lot of that happens through community by providing global and local spaces where merchants can connect with other merchants and builders like you can help provide the support that they need. Now, each of you is a, 
here is an important part of the WooCommerce community and a key part of the value that is WooCommerce. You are helping to volunteer in our community spaces like Facebook, Reddit, and Slack. You're organizing and participating in meetups. You're showing up to our developer chats to ask questions and share feedback. You've helped make WooCommerce what it is today. And, and we, we thank you. Thank you for all that you've been doing and all that you're continuing to do to help merchants succeed. We've got a packed agenda for the rest of this presentation and the WooSesh lineup this year is looking fantastic. Thank you, Brian and Patrick, for all that you've put into making this happen and all the other speakers and sponsors who put their time and, and resources into this. So let's get to the agenda. Next up, you're gonna be hearing from Alan, our developer advocate. He's gonna talk more about the opportunities that we see for developers. Then Elizabeth and David will be talking about the new design work happening in Core. That's uh, super exciting. You're gonna to wanna to catch that. Clara and Brent will also be sharing the latest about WooCommerce payments and our plans for the future. Alana will give you an update on how the marketplace has grown in the past year and what's coming up. And then we'll wrap it up with Q&A. I hope you enjoy it. Alan, over to you. Hey everybody, I am delighted to be joining for WooSesh this year and I'm very excited to share a little bit with y'all about our focus on developers at WooCommerce. But before we dive in, I'd like to take just a little bit of time to talk about this opportunity that exists for people who are building atop the WooCommerce platform, people who are building things with the WooCommerce platform. Really, there are three big opportunity areas for people who want to build with WooCommerce. There's an opportunity to earn money, there's an opportunity to help people, and there is an opportunity to quite literally change the world. So let's start with a big one. Let's talk about money first and foremost. Money's not everything, but it is kind of important, right? There's never been a better time to develop software for e-commerce and specifically for WooCommerce. In 2017, e-commerce represented roughly 8 to 13% of retail sales, and that's just here in the United States where I live. Globally, e-commerce is estimated to be around a $4 trillion market, and by 2021, they're estimating that to be around $4.5 trillion. So it's growing that fast. And within the next two decades, e-commerce is actually projected to account for 95% of all shopping 95 percent that's huge now other th other things to consider is that wordpress powers a very high relatively high percentage of the web it's 36 percent of the world wide web that runs on wordpress and woocommerce is the platform of choice of about one in four e-commerce businesses so there is never a better time to develop for e-commerce, but more specifically, there has never been a better time to develop for WooCommerce than right now. But it's not just about money, right? We do get to help people. Merchants do get to help people succeed. These merchants uh, have different definitions of success, but really it's not about money, or it's not just about money, we should say. Uh, for a lot of these merchants, if you read the stories and you understand why they started their businesses, a lot of times it's about taking control of their own future or about improving their own quality of life or the quality of lives, <clears throat> excuse me, the quality of the lives for the people around them. One example that I loved reading about was this mom in Lithuania who used WooCommerce to start a business that let her get out of her nine to five commute and spend more time with her. And now what she does is she makes uh, artwork that people can hang in their nurseries. It's just a fantastic story about how WooCommerce has let this person transform their day-to-day -day life by empowering them to start their own business. Uh, if you want to read more stories about things like this, you can visit woocommerce.com slash success stories about all these merchants who are finding success. But we developers get to help people have this kind of success in their lives. We get to help people change their lives to control their futures. And I said before that we are quite literally changing the world as developers. And that is true. I'd like to share this quote with y'all because I think it's very relevant to what we're talking about here. It's from, <clears throat> excuse me, it's from Buckminster Fuller. And he said that you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. 
And that is what is happening right now with e-commerce. As we saw before, really all commerce is becoming e-commerce. By 2040, 95% of all shopping is going to be e-commerce driven. But the thing that's interesting to me is that e-commerce isn't really just transforming commerce. It's supplanting the very idea, the very notion of what it means to conduct business. E-commerce is the new model. It's the innovation that's making the old model obsolete. This is why you see all of these stories about e-commerce businesses that are completely disrupting industries. One that I especially love is the story of these two guys who used WooCommerce uh, to start a business in Australia that completely disrupted the dog food industry. It made it much more transparent. It eliminated a lot of the bureaucracy that was running rampant in that entire industry. And they're turning it on its head. And that's what you see when you have this new model. It's not just transforming things, it's upending the whole model and creating something new. WooCommerce is democratizing that innovation so that it belongs to everybody or that it can belong to everybody. One merchant, one store at a time. Now, I, I've used a, uh, a photo here of typeset, typeset letters from a printing press. And I think that this is very relevant as we'll see here in just a second. So if WooCommerce is helping change the world, I have to say developers are integral to democratizing commerce. That is our mission at WooCommerce is to democratize commerce and developers are critical to that mission. Why is that? Well, it's because technology is such a powerful lever for democratization. I used that image of the printing press or the letters from the printing press in that previous slide because I feel like it's very relevant here. In the same way that the printing press gave access to knowledge and literacy to a much wider group of people from different socioeconomic classes, technology like WordPress and technology like WooCommerce, it lets people set up a website and an online storefront who might have never had access to the kind of capital and resources that they would need to start their own business in a traditional model. And technology powers all of that, right? These are businesses just like traditional businesses, but they are much more reliant on technology. Now, in 2011, this guy named Mark Andreessen, uh, he said, software is eating the world. A lot of people know this. What was he trying to say? Right. This was nine years ago. Uh, last year, Satya Nadella, who's the CEO of Microsoft, he kind of put it in a slightly different way that's a little bit easier to digest, if you'll pardon the pun. He said every company is now a software company, and that is very, very true. E-commerce businesses are no different. They are software companies, perhaps even more so because they are so reliant on software to even function at all. And that at its heart is why developers are critical to WooCommerce's mission. Because the, excuse me, the solutions that developers come up with, they're not just an equalizer that helps these small businesses compete with the giants. These solutions that developers create, they are actually what give shape to that new model of commerce. So who are Woo developers? Now, in July of this year, we sent out a survey to folks who self-identify as quote unquote WooCommerce developers. And I'll tell y'all, we learned a lot. This is one of my favorite uh, diagrams that, that I'm gonna share with y'all here next. What we learned is that WooCommerce developers are not just developers. We asked people this question, how do you use WooCommerce? How do you interact with WooCommerce on a daily basis? And we learned all sorts of interesting things. For instance, 75% of people who build bins or extensions, they also build and maintain stores for merchants. And vice versa, 70% of the people who build uh, stores for merchants also build and maintain extensions or plugins. Uh, there's a certain subset of people who are uh, theme developers out of that group as well. But what I think is really interesting is if you'll notice the overlap between the people who build and maintain stores, the people who build and maintain plugins, they themselves are also store owners. So these are people who have direct experience, not just with merchants that they build for, but they have direct experience as a merchant themselves. 
there's a ton of overlap. So nobody is just a developer, it seems. Or maybe you could say that everybody who interacts with WooCommerce is in one way or another kind of a developer by nature of the platform itself. So what are we doing to help nurture and support these developers? With the time that we have left, I'd love to share a little bit about some of the things that we're doing and planning on doing to help make sure that developers have what they need to succeed with WooCommerce going forward. So the big question, right? What do WooCommerce developers want? Well, we ask this question in a few different ways uh, in our survey this year. And as a developer advocate, I'm always asking people this question. I'm constantly asking, what are you working on? What obstacles are in your way? And what can we do to help you move past those obstacles? So we're asking people this question, these questions all the time. And really, all the feedback that we have gotten, it boils down to, to two things that most developers need or want. Developers want clear written guidance and developers want thorough technical documentation. And so these two things above anything else are the most important to most developers. And that, so that's been our focus for the past handful of months or so. And it's a lot of work that we have, have realized as we started. So we broke it down into phases that have made it more manageable and more iterative. The first phase that we went through was what I like to say was a discovery phase. We want to help developers find the things that they need. Because one consistent bit of feedback that we received from developers was that we had a lot of really helpful resources out there but some of these things were very difficult to find unless you knew what you were looking for or where to find it. So one of the first things that we did is we put together what we call a developer resources portal. And this is a one-stop shop. It's a centralized location for all of the things that you would need to be productive with WooCommerce as a developer. So here you're gonna find reference docs or links to them anyway. Uh, productivity tools, so things for managing your development environment, things for doing end-to-end -end testing. There's links to libraries that you might rely upon, so React components are one. If you wanted to have a client library for using the WooCommerce REST API, you'll find a link to it there. We, all, <coughs> excuse me, we also have guides and examples and community resources on this page as well. This is the centralized location where you go if you want to find anything related to developing for WooCommerce. And you can go there by visiting, uh, excuse me, developer.woocommerce.com. The other thing that I'll point out here too is we've recently uh, updated our code reference, the WooCommerce core code reference. So now what is happening is it's auto-generated from the inline documentation in the code. So that makes it much easier to keep the code, excuse me, the uh, documentation itself up to date as the code changes. And there's all sorts of other features that we now have because we've switched to a different uh, generator library. Uh, there's easier searchability, all sorts of other improvements due to this library. So I encourage people to check it out. It's linked from the developer portal as well. So take a look at that. I know that they put a lot of work into redesigning this and making sure that it was out there for developers. So definitely take a look. So the next phase, phase two is where we are right now. What we wanna do is educate and enable developers. One insight that we have gleaned from listening to Woo developers is they often follow a very similar journey when they're trying to solve a problem with WooCommerce. So for starters, they'll look for a tutorial or a guide that helps explain what they're trying to do. How do you extend X feature? How do you integrate with the REST API? If they can't find anything specific to that feature, then they'll start looking at the code documentation. So that core code reference, they'll try to understand how all the pieces fit together from that documentation. And if they can't find the answers there, then they will just dive in and try to figure it out for themselves. And that's a very consistent pattern across lots and lots of groups of developers. And what we're trying to do now is we're putting a lot of effort into filling that content gap that exists in that first step where developers are looking for guidance materials that explain how they should do it in a proper way, in a way that's future-proof. And so that's what we're doing. So 
we're putting together lots of resources right now. We want to have authoritative guidance for developers. It's going to help them adhere to development best practices. They want to, uh, we want to have them build solutions that extend the platform in ways that are uh, robust, that are future-proof, ways that we recommend extending the platform. And finally, we want extensions to provide a first-class experience to merchants. So these are the three kind of guiding principles for all of the content that we're going to be creating. And I understand that this is very high level and maybe a little bit hand wavy at this point, but I'll give you a few concrete examples uh, to give you an idea of the type of content that we are talking about. So what do we have in mind? Uh, maybe you want to learn how to set up automated testing for a WooCommerce extension. We want to put together materials that show you how to do that so it makes it easier to focus on developing your extension and not having to worry about uh, how to test it, how to do end-to-end -end testing. What if you don't know a whole lot about writing uh, extensions for WooCommerce? We want to have a resource there for you that shows you some essential design patterns that have been battle tested. What uh, design pattern should you use when architecting your extension? What's going to work well in the future? Let's say you already have an extension but maybe it doesn't use a lot of these new JavaScript centric features like React, like components, things like that. How do you go about adding a build system to an existing extension? These are the types of resources we want. We want to make sure that developers are providing that consistent first class experience for merchants that's seamless, but also extensible. So these are all things that we're thinking about and things that uh, we're weighing as we're putting together these uh, content items. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, how do you get involved? That's another big question that people have. I would say the number one way to get involved is to join our Slack community. You can find a link to that uh, from our developer portal. Excuse me. You can find a link to our Slack community on the developer portal. If you join our Slack community, I highly encourage you to come to our weekly office hours. We have these on Wednesdays at 1400 UTC. What it is, it's an unstructured time where people can bring problems that they're working on, ask questions to other developers. It's a great time to get your questions answered if you're having trouble uh, building something for WooCommerce, if you're working on an extension, or if you're trying to uh, troubleshoot a compatibility issue between two different extensions or a theme. This is a great place to get the help that you need as a developer. So I encourage you to uh, join that Slack community, come to our office hours. So that's all I have. Uh, what I'm going to do now is pass things off to Elizabeth and David, who are going to share some updates about some really exciting things that are landing in WooCommerce. Thanks, everybody. Perfect. Thanks for that, Alan. Hi, all. I'm going to share with you some of what the Woo Design team has been working on as it relates to the WooCommerce core merchant-facing experience. And near the end, I'll share some design directions that we haven't shared publicly yet at all. So first, I want to start with who we're designing for. This will give us a good overview of the use cases that we need to keep in mind when designing for the home screen. So for WooCommerce merchants, we know some of their motivations are common. Everyone values security, everyone wants to trust the products they're using, and everyone wants their store to look professional. Then there are some things that every merchant tackles uniquely. They can range from, my setup is very specific and I can't figure it out on my own. They could have a very complex product catalog and a complicated shipping setup and they need to consider packaging, weights, carriers. Most people here are seeking professional help in one way or another. The other side of the range are merchants who say, you know, this should be easier. I'm not doing anything complex. For these merchants, they want their store to just work. Then we have WooCommerce builders and extension authors. They can handle complex customizations. They're well versed in the WordPress ecosystem. They need the ability to extend WooCommerce with their authored plugins. Hold up. How can you design for the experienced developer and first time store owner at the same time? This is something we think about a lot on WooDesign and this is one of our biggest challenges. In the end, it's all about helping merchants succeed. Woo and builders are partners in helping store owners get important things done. If merchants reach a level of success with their store, 
we've done our job. By optimizing the home screen, we aim to empower store owners to get started faster and smartly manage their businesses. Also, we want to give them the tools and support to get the most out of the WooCommerce platform. And to facilitate this, we are also helping WooCommerce builders integrate into the home screen in a few ways I'll share. So let's have a look at what we're calling home screen 1.0. So this welcome modal lets people settle into the new experience, have an understanding of the intention behind the changes that they're seeing. One of the things we're working on is crafting better communications with customers, creating more human interactions in the product. So the main goal with the home screen design is to provide a central hub where you can manage your store. We ultimately want to shorten the amount of time between store setup and getting your first order. Previously, the dashboard was a page entirely composed of analytics, and we realized we needed a middle ground because analytics are only relevant for stores that are very active. So with a combination of dynamic setup tasks and helpful inbox messages, the solution is to provide easy access to relevant, timely content for people to act upon, whether they're just starting store building or they're a more mature store. So one of the data points we're looking at to measure success is setup task completion. We did see a small dip in those numbers with the release of the new home screen. So we decided to experiment with something new in the next iteration. All right, so I am gonna jump into the prototype now. So this is what we're calling Home Screen 2.0. We're exploring a single column layout that simplifies and unifies the content on the page. Also, this approach adapts really well to the mobile web experience, which is a huge plus. So these setup tasks are dynamic based on the input in the onboarding wizard. So for example, if the merchant has indicated they only sell digital products, this shipping step wouldn't appear. Also, there are inbox messages that are focused on helping and motivating merchants during the store setup. These are also triggered based on the data input from the store profiler to be more relevant. So for a brand new store, we're hoping this improves the setup task completion and gets them to reach success with their store faster. So we want to maintain the flexibility of the screen for merchants who may already be comfortable with the two column layout. So we have a display control where you can switch to two columns if that works better for you. So I'm going to fast forward through the setup process. And here we will have completed all of our tasks. We have a moment of success. Then upon returning to the store or refreshing the page, the layout will default to two columns. So merchants can take advantage of the full area for all of their store management tasks. Fast forward again, and the merchant has dismissed the setup task card. They've started having orders and other activity in their store. You can see that the insights are starting to add up in the stats overview card, and they have their inbox messages here. The agenda items are orders to fulfill, reviews to moderate, and products to restock. You can see all of these items directly from the home screen and take action on the reviews and the products right from here. So you can go ahead and update your inventory. One of the things that I definitely want to touch upon is extensibility. So ways that extensions can plug into the home screen. Number one are in the setup tasks. So once an extension is installed, the extension author can trigger a setup task that could help the merchant with onboarding to the extension or other things. Another area where extensions can plug in is in the store management card. So there's a section here for extensions. Lastly, Extension authors also have the possibility of sharing information with merchants via inbox messages. So based on the performance so far, 
we're going to be thoughtfully iterating on the home screen in upcoming releases of WooCommerce. We are always interested in partnering with y'all to ensure a better, more powerful experience for store owners. So keep an eye out for more details on extensibility in the coming months. Hey there. Thank you, Elizabeth. Hey, everyone. Well, it goes without saying that cart and checkout are two of the most critical components of the e-commerce experience. That said, not much has changed with the core WooCommerce cart and checkout over the years. In fact, the high-level architecture and flow has been around since 2011, when WooCommerce was originally forked from Jigashop. Now, there's this other thing going on that you may have heard a thing or two about, and that's Gutenberg. As you're probably already aware, it's really reshaping the way store builders, merchants, and customers interact with WordPress and WooCommerce. We took this confluence of events as an opportunity to ask ourselves, what would a Gutenberg-based cart and checkout flow look like for WooCommerce? What if we reimagine the cart and checkout from top to bottom? What changes when we implement modern e-commerce best practices with the focus on improving customer conversion and flexibility for merchants? Well, today I'm honored and excited to show you what the cart and checkout team's been working on. We started work on this project over a year ago. We began by conducting extensive research into e-commerce best practices, pulling relevant details from over 54,000 hours of user experience studies conducted by the Baymart Institute, which by the way, is a great resource for anyone interested in e-commerce. We backed that research with our own in-depth competitor analysis and usability studies conducted with participants from the WooCommerce design feedback group that Elizabeth mentioned earlier. All that said, these blocks are still very much a work in progress, but that's where all of you come into play. We're really excited to get these blocks into the hands of more people to continue gathering more important feedback. Getting started with the new cart and checkout blocks is easy. All you've got to do is install and activate the WooCommerce Blocks feature plugin available in the WordPress.org plugin repository. Once that's up and running, head over to your cart and checkout pages in WordPress. We'll take a look at the checkout page as an example. Simply delete the shortcode block and replace it with the new checkout block. Once the block is in the editor, you'll have the ability to further refine it in a much more contextual way, using the block settings in the sidebar as opposed to digging through the depths of WooCommerce settings on other screens. You'll notice as I make changes to the settings in the sidebar, they're instantly reflected in the editor, giving the merchants a real-time view of how the blocks will appear to their customers on the front end of their store. It's that easy. So let's switch gears here and take a look at what customers will see and experience as they're checking out. We'll start by quickly adding a few things to the cart. Okay, that's probably good. Now when we head over to the cart, we'll see everything that we just added in the shiny new cart block. You'll see that as I change the quantity of the items in my cart, the rest of the details on the page update automatically. The same behavior now applies to adding coupons. and previewing different shipping rates, even removing items from the cart. This means no more accidentally forgetting to click an update button than heading to your checkout only to realize that your changes to the order weren't saved. Individually, these are small details, but when taken as a whole, they really smooth out the entire experience. Moving along to checkout now, again, just like the cart, adding or removing a coupon or changes in the shipping options will automatically update the order totals. You'll see that the order of the required information the customer must provide has been updated and grouped into clearly defined sections to help them maintain a sense of place as they move through the process. You'll see we have contact information, shipping address, shipping options, which of course will only show up if you're shipping physical products, and payment methods. We've added inline form validation for critical fields like email that instantly notify a customer of a problem. As you can see in this example, I've mistyped my email and it's letting me know that I forgot the at symbol. Along the same lines, we're now providing payment method extensions the ability to signal to checkout that there's a problem, along with some handy components to assist with the display and rendering of these validation issues. This example is with the Stripe extension, and as you can see, all this happens before the customer attempts to complete the purchase. End result is fewer failed checkouts and happier customers all around. Right out of the box, the cart and checkout blocks have been designed to adapt to any theme. They automatically inherit fonts and colors from the theme for a seamless look with no effort. And of course, if you're up for it, 
They can be further styled with additional CSS for an even more custom look. The inputs in the cart and checkout blocks are designed to work on any background color, but if your store has a dark background color, we've added a dark mode toggle to the block settings for an even slicker integration with a single click. And last but certainly not least, the blocks are designed to perform well across devices of all shapes and sizes. So what's next in our roadmap for the cart and checkout blocks? Well, as I mentioned earlier, all of this is currently available in the WooCommerce Blocks feature plugin. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to install that, activate it, and provide us your thoughts on the experience. We've tried to make this as easy as possible by including a feedback link directly into the block settings in the editor. Many of the improvements that are in the works right now are a direct result of community feedback. The blocks are stable and ready to run on a production site. The main limiting factor for most people at this point will be support for existing payment methods. However, the team is actively working on integrations for our most popular gateways and extensions that interface with the cart and checkout screens. Now, if you're developing your own payment gateway, we've got documentation set up to assist you in integrating with the checkout block. Otherwise, please keep an eye on our developer blog. Our ongoing extension integration work will open up APIs for other types of extensions that require integrations with the cart and checkout blocks. We'll be sure to announce them on the developer blog. So that's it for me today. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Really looking forward to your feedback. And now I'm going to hand it over to Clara and Brent, who are going to fill you in on the latest from WooCommerce Payments. Take it away, y'all. Thank you, David. Hey, everyone. I'm Clara. My colleague Brent and I will be taking time to chat with you today about WooCommerce Payments. We're super excited about it, and hopefully this is something that you've already heard of. But if not, we'll take a few minutes to give you a summary of what the team's been working on. We'll include some facts, demos, and showcases. But what we really want for you to take away from this is an understanding of the strategy behind WooCommerce Payments and what it can mean for all of us growing together. Jonathan mentioned in the opening the overall Woo strategy, and I just want to bring that back into focus for a moment. Point one, we aim to help store owners and store builders grow and succeed. And we do this by providing services that really help them scale their businesses. Secondly, we want to constantly improve our core product experience so that store owners and store builders can focus on the big picture things that are needed to win and serve their customers right. So it's with these two strategies in mind that we set out to create WooCommerce Payments. As everyone here knows, payments is a critical element of e-commerce. For merchants, it's all about offering seamless checkout experiences to your shoppers on the front end while being able to operate simple payments management interfaces on the back end. Since its inception, WooCommerce has allowed users to choose from a variety of third-party payment gateways, including Stripe and PayPal. But over time, we realized we actually have a real opportunity to improve the user experience on Woo in this area. So here's a quick timeline view just to catch everyone up on our journey. In 2019, WooCommerce began designing and building a native payment solution. We launched a successful beta in March of 2020 and made WooCommerce payments widely available to all US-based store owners and store builders in May. In July, we shipped saved cards functionality so that store owners can give shoppers the option to safely store their credit card details for faster checkout. And most recently, we launched subscription support in September. Brent will talk more about that in just a few minutes. So now that you've seen what we've been working on, let's talk about impact. In regards to the front end shopping experience, there are a ton of stats about conversion and card abandonment. And here's a few from North America, just for example. While there will always be window shoppers, no one can argue that there's a huge opportunity to increase conversion and reduce abandonment. As we're headed into the holiday season, and given the increasing competitiveness of e-commerce in 2020, every percentage point matters. A complicated checkout flow or process is one of the top three reasons for cart abandonment. So with WooCommerce Payments, we knew that we wanted to support a store experience that allows shoppers to pay without leaving the site. On the back end, we focused on enabling store owners to do more within their store. There's no better way to make this point 
than by showing it. I'm sharing a quick reel that highlights WooCommerce Payments killer feature, what we like to call the integrated payments dashboard. No more logging into a separate payment processor website to track payouts, manage chargebacks, or address disputes. WooCommerce users can now manage all of these activities right from their WooCommerce dashboard. And so far, we've heard positive feedback from several store owners. Here's just one example from Nick, the owner of Drift Fishing. He had tried several other payments options before landing with WooCommerce Payments, and here he highlights the ease of use, integration, and convenience of being able to manage all payments activity right within WooCommerce. We've also heard from store builders, which include agencies, developers, and freelancers. Third-party integrations sometimes risk incompatibility, so going with a native payment solution gives not only peace of mind, but makes it easier to assist clients with payment questions or manage payments on their behalf. All of this is done securely and without the hassle of logging into a separate payment processor. I'll pass it over now to Brent to talk about what adding subscription support means and does for the WooCommerce community. Thanks. Thanks, Clara. Hi, Wusesh. My name's Brent. Uh, you may know me from my work on WooCommerce subscriptions, which I first started developing eight years ago, back in 2012. I'm excited to talk to you about WooCommerce payments today, and in particular, how it supports WooCommerce subscriptions. Not only because we recently announced last month that WooCommerce payments now support, supports WooCommerce subscriptions, but also because the strategy that led to the WooCommerce subscriptions product and that first being developed in 2012 is a very similar strategy and goes hand in hand with the same strategy we're applying today or we're following today with WooCommerce payments. When I started building WooCommerce subscriptions in 2012, subscription solutions on other co competing commerce platforms required two systems, one to manage your store and one to manage your recurring payments and subscriptions. <clears throat> two systems, two accounts, two logins, two dashboards. Because of the open source nature of WooCommerce subscriptions, even as an independent developer, which I was at the time, I was able to bring all of the subscription functionality into WooCommerce and have one system, one account, one login, one dashboard. Soon after joining Automatic last year, I saw how WooCommerce Payments was going to do the same, but take it a giant leap forward for the entire payments experience. And I was excited to have the opportunity to work on it. Prior to launching WooCommerce Payments in May this year, to get paid with WooCommerce required two accounts, one for your payment gateway and one for your WooCommerce store. Two accounts, two logins, two dashboards. That all changed when we launched WooCommerce Payments. And now with WooCommerce Payments and WooCommerce subscriptions, you can have one integra fully integrated experience that's only possible in a truly open e-commerce platform. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. But before we do, I want to show, I want to highlight that this demo is going to be running in dev mode. To set up WooCommerce payments, normally you need to verify your identity and provide business or personal data like a bank account or social security number. The demo store I'm about to run, run, work with is running in dev mode. Dev mode makes it possible to create a test account with no personal information. It's the approach we recommend when setting up a, or when setting up a test site, whether it's to test the product or to demonstrate how things work for a client or even running a, a development mode for a client site. In dev mode, it will only operate in test mode and run test transactions. It can't be used to process live transactions. To enable dev mode is just a matter of adding the defined WCPay dev mode to true, the constant to true, and having this in your WP config. There's a test account setup guide you can find on the WooCommerce docs site. Now onto the demo. If you've used WooCommerce subscriptions, this screen will look fairly familiar, but I'm about to take you on a little journey into some screens that may not be so familiar. First, let's jump into an administration screen for a, for a subscription. The thing I want to so, show you right at the outset is some of the unique benefits you get by combining all your systems into one. The first of these is this credit card selection field down here, or the save payment method selection field on a, on a subscription. Normally, with other payment gateways, changing the payment method on a subscription requires going into the payment gateways dashboard, logging in if you're not already logged in, 
finding the customer token or the credit card token or whatever other data represents the saved payment method, copy and pasting that and then bringing it into WooCommerce. With WooCommerce payments and WooCommerce subscriptions, it's as simple as selecting this field and then choosing the credit card that you want to char charge future recurring payments for. Let's go and have a look at the latest data on this subscription, uh, the latest order on this subscription to have a little bit of look, a little closer look at how the data connects. First, we can see the transaction ID up here. This isn't new. This is this happens with many other payment gateways. But when we click that transaction, that's where we get into some of the new things that are only possible with WooCommerce payments. Here we have the details of the payment that's associated with that order and that subscription. You can see the associations listed at the top here, and we can easily jump between the different types, types of data. We can also go in and look at the timeline for the subscription. And this is where things, as well as the payment method and the customer data, but the timeline is where things get quite interesting because you can see on this transaction, the payment was actually disputed or came in as a chargeback as product not received. This is where we get to see the real benefits of having an integrated dashboard with WooCommerce payments. Clicking through to view the dispute, we can actually get more data on the dispute alongside the charge and the order. And we can even go in and challenge the dispute, submitting evidence to overturn to the bank to overturn the dispute without ever leaving WooCommerce. Let's go ahead and challenge this dispute now. Because it's in test mode, we can use our little cheat code and submit winning evidence. And once we return to our transaction screen, we should see that we've won the dispute. There we are there. The dispute status is now one. Here we're on the disputes page. This is a transaction listing like you would get at a payment gateway screen. And we also have a transaction screen, which just provides an overview of all transactions. You can also go in and see deposits and see the status of when your next payment is coming for your account balance, uh, as well as go into the, have a look at the details of certain deposit of prior deposits and have a look at which transactions were associated with that, as well as which subscriptions. And that's uh, the demo I'm going to provide today. So <clears throat> going back to our timeline, uh, make sure I get the right slides up. Going back to our timeline, I hope we've shown how we're investing in building the right foundation, Clara and I, in WooCommerce payments, both last year and this year. But it's still only been less than six months since we officially launched WooCommerce payments. There's still so much more in store for the future. Looking at 2021 and beyond, we're investing heavily to unlock more features in more countries. WooCommerce Payments is going to be the native payment method for a global commerce platform. So we want to launch in as many countries as possible over the coming, year, coming years. If you're in a country outside the US or a country not supported, I recommend you go to ideas.woocommerce.com and vote for your country because that's influencing the priority in which we launch in new countries. We're also going to offer many of the features available with other payment gateways right within WooCommerce. Things like instant deposits so you can get paid within 30 minutes rather than having to wait days for your payout if you need to improve your cash flow or manage your cash flow, as well as capital and small business loans to help you grow your business based on the, the history you have through WooCommerce payments and much, much more. And I want to end with a note uh, that's a sort of personal experience for me. Um, I mentioned at the start that in 2012, it was possible even as an outside developer to build WooCommerce subscriptions as a native e-commerce, as a native subscription solution with uh, WooCommerce, and that that was only possible because of an open platform. Well, beyond providing a better user experience, using WooCommerce payments also helps support open commerce, more so than any other payment method for WooCommerce. It's why we're investing in it so much and it's one of the reasons, one of the best ways we can grow our businesses together. <clears throat> if you want to see open commerce succeed and help democratize commerce alongside of us, I encourage you to consider adding WooCommerce payments to, to the stores you manage. Thank you. Thanks so much for that, Brent. Up next is Alana, who's going to give us an update on the marketplace. Over to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our session on the WooCommerce marketplace today. I'm excited to walk you through the progress we made in 2020 and our plans for 2021. So first, I'll dive into some of the numbers. So we saw substantial marketplace growth in 2020. 
Since opening up the marketplace in 2019, we've been able to increase our inventory by over 200 extensions, bringing us across the 500 threshold this month. Super excited about the increased diversity that we've been able to bring to our merchants here. In addition to our marketplace extension growth, we've seen a 32% increase in our subscribers and 39% growth in marketplace sales. So here you'll see worldwide retail e-commerce sales from 2014 projected out to 2023. In 2019, retail e-commerce sales worldwide amounted to about 3 trillion US dollars and e-retail revenues are projected to grow to 6.5 trillion US dollars in 2022. Online shopping is clearly one of the most popular online activities worldwide. So next we'd like to share our marketplace mission statement. Our mission for the marketplace is to get the right extension in front of the right user at exactly the right time. We've been working a ton on projects over the course of the past year that will allow us to improve extension discoverability and merchant user experience to enable us to do just that. So now I'll dive into those projects a bit deeper and walk you through our goals for the marketplace. So as I mentioned, in 2020, we were really focused on the merchant user experience in the marketplace with a focus on making our extensions more discoverable by the right people. We approached this in a few ways. First, we wanted to ensure that we had a best-in-class search experience. We started to test smart search and also added some additional promotional placements to highlight various extensions and collections. I've been working hard to improve the vendor experience by introducing our vendor program. I have a ton of exciting updates on this in the coming slides. I also highlighted this in the numbers section, but want to reiterate our focus on widening our inventory and increasing its depth in order to offer a more diverse selection of options for our merchants. And of course, we've been working to improve our platform stability and health overall. So as we approach 2021, we wanna make sure that our work from this year is taken to the next level. While expanding our vendor program beyond where it is today to deliver an excellent vendor experience from the first moment vendors start working with us in the marketplace throughout the lifetime of our relationship with them. Our search efforts will expand beyond smart search to include weighted triggers and smart recommendations. We'll be focusing our efforts to expand our marketplace inventory, help vendors whose first language is in English with translations and provide a direct connection to merchants for feature requests. We'll also be introducing a number of updates and improvements around the way that products and vendors are presented to merchants with an improved UX and the ability to provide more useful information. And lastly, we'll be introducing new ways to better support SaaS products in the marketplace. More on all of that to come, but first I'd like to dive into the categories that we're really honing in on in the marketplace. So we've had a great year when it comes to expanding our inventory in the marketplace. We've also been able to grow the team and have brought in a new business development lead, Adepeju, who you'll all meet soon if you haven't met already. The team will be honing in on our strategy in 2021, aiming to focus on specific categories where we'd like to diversify further and offer more optionality to our merchants. So firstly, we have themes. We've been working to bring in more third-party themes to the marketplace and have a handful live, which are doing really well. Themes, of course, are a common first purchase and therefore are successful in our marketplace. So we're looking to meaningfully increase our inventory here and continue to bring in more high quality, beautiful themes. We actually have a story from one of our great theme developers, Get Bowtied, later in our session, so stay tuned for that. We're also highly focused on localization and translation extensions to better serve our international merchants. This is also a huge focus for 2021 for WooCommerce ourselves as a merchant. Some other categories that we're focused on are import and export, inventory and fulfillment, accounting, cart and checkout, reporting and personalization, and many more. So now I'd like to dive a bit deeper into the work that we're doing with Vendor Program. Starting off with Vendor Pages. 
So here is our vendor pages and what they look like today. They're meant to serve as vendors face to the merchant and it's really an opportunity for vendors to market themselves, show off your excellent support and show off your suite of products in the marketplace. But we'll be introducing a lot more functionality to vendor pages in 2021. So as you see here in this mock-up, we'll give more insight into vendor support ratings. We'll be introducing the ability for users to follow a vendor and we'll be displaying badges on the vendor page to highlight special benchmarks our vendors have achieved. The next version of our vendor pages will also give vendors the opportunity to display blog content, educational content, and vendor updates, giving you as a vendor a direct connection to your customers. We'll also be linking to our feedback portal, which I'll talk more about in a few. Before we do that though, we'll be getting into the vendor dashboard. So here's some improvements we'll be making to the vendor dashboard. Uh, today, our vendor dashboard includes revenue and subscriber reporting for each product that you have in the marketplace. We understand that this is not enough insight into your product performance, and we have a ton planned for the next year to better this experience. So on this slide, you'll see some examples of features that we'll be adding to the vendor dashboard, but I'd like to highlight a few here. So firstly, we'd like to make our onboarding experience a lot smoother and more efficient. We'll be building out an onboarding wizard that will allow us to automate and streamline this process. Um, and we'll be providing a lot more granularity into the reporting in the dashboard as well. So a big one here will be a Google Analytics integration, which I know is a highly requested feature. And this will give you insights into your product page performance, um, and not only that, we'll be utilizing this increased granularity in the metrics to offer up smart suggestions to better your product page performance overall and to surface potential marketing and promotional opportunities in the marketplace. We'll also be delivering feedback from merchants directly to you as a vendor within the dashboard. This will include things like ratings and reviews, net promoter score, customer satisfaction score, access to refund reasons, which I know is a big one for many of you, um, and the feedback portal, which I keep alluding to and we'll dive into next. So now I'll finally dive into the merchant feedback portal. So we're super excited to announce that we're bringing a feedback portal to the marketplace to open up the feedback loop and to better connect merchants with vendors. This is another way that we're hoping to improve upon the ability vendors have to communicate with their users directly. So in the first iteration of this, we'll have links to the feedback portal on product pages, allowing merchants to easily provide feedback to vendors. This will include the ability to comment back and forth and for vendors to provide status updates for features requested. The longer term vision for this includes the ability for a user to subscribe to a request or to follow a vendor's updates, the ability to vote on a request and for vendors to send messages out to followers. So I mentioned this earlier, but one of our theme authors, Get Bowtied, has been kind enough to share his experience working with us in the marketplace with all of you. I'm going to jump into his video right now. As a design studio that specializes in themes for WooCommerce, we're really hoping WooCommerce.com will eventually open its doors to third-party developers like us the same way it did for plugin developers for so many years. So we were following it as close as we could in the last few years, especially after 2015 when Automatic joined. The harder we worked, the luckier we got. At some point, uh, around the time the marketplace got released to the public, Alana got in touch with me. We had a few calls in which we've discussed a few ideas, the opportunities uh, Team Marketplace would bring for developers, and we would we ended up setting up timelines and getting into actual work for a new team. Sure, we had to deal with our own anxieties when we decided to invest. Uh, pioneering the marketplace sounded like a good idea, but on the other hand, we were definitely skeptical about how soon we can see any return of investment on a new marketplace. Even if it's the official one, it was still a new one. There were only two teams there at the time, but it still felt right. 
we've seen a lot of value into being able to have this new start, like a blank canvas, not just for us, but for the whole industry, which would translate into cleaner teams. Hoping for a better WooCommerce team, being able to take part of a trusted community of professionals, as well as finally having an official place for WooCommerce teams only. Where as a user, you won't have to dig through all that multi-purpose teams utopia. So we wanted to be there when it happened. Everything felt new at first, but I soon understood uh, that uh, communication is oxygen thing I've been hearing around automatic every now and then. We were guided at each step before the amount of information got to feel overwhelming. And I totally appreciate it now. We weren't just guided, but compared to other reviews we went through for our teams, we got actual feedback, constructive feedback that helped us improve our product and move forward with our work. The first few months were heavy, I must say, with the marketplace being all new. Well, we were having just a few sales every now and then. But the patience eventually paid off. A few months later, we started seeing more traffic coming in, which soon turned into a more consistent flow of sales. And that's due to their marketing efforts. Seeing that was, was reassuring. That is when we really knew we were in the right place. We have now moved forward with our work with the new black editor and the future of full site editing as team developers, we now have, well, almost have everything we ever hoped for. The perspective for teams is now greater than it ever was. We've already started working on a full site editing team for WooCommerce. It's still a learning process, but we've clearly entering a new era and we're totally excited about it. And it, it feels like it's our chance, not just for us, but as an industry to start building a new breed of themes. It's our chance to do more of what we love. And we now have the place, the best place there is and all the support we need to have that happen. So team developers, let's do this. Thank you, get bow tied. So thanks everyone again for joining. Um, I've really enjoyed getting the chance to, to speak with all of you. If you'd like to explore opportunities with the marketplace, please check out our Get Started guide on our website, or you can also reach out to me at alana.weinstein at automatic.com. Thank you all so much again, and I'll hand it back over to Patrick for Q&A.